thank you, Lord, this morning, God. I thank you for the beautiful worship, mighty God. I thank you, Lord, even as I submit myself to you, God. Bring flesh under the subjection to you. Lord, take control over my thoughts, my mind, my spirit, my body, God. Lord, use whatever words that come out of my lips to be from you, Lord. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. That last song, all these songs of the worship, I could relate to. And just Friday, I delivered this word. And God is good because last week I had a very tough week. Because I was fighting with going back to the old thoughts and the way of thinking. It's very easy. You can, you can slip into your thoughts and just find yourself going back to that trail that was cut for many years. But we cannot do it without God and we can't do it without his spirit. Only he is able to keep us and set us straight. So we have to continue to be mindful and subject ourselves and surrender everything to him. We can't do it without Jesus. All right. So, how it's amazing how God uses every single detail of our lives to then minister to us and then for others. And God has been teaching me about renewing my mind daily and not conforming to the old ways. That's Romans 12, 2. And so God expects us of us and we will see how it relates to artificial intelligence and divine intelligence versus divine intelligence. So what I'm going to speak on today as God leads me, is about the impact of artificial intelligence in our world going forward as believers and how it and versus the comparison to the divine intelligence. And we will see that intelligence is not really who we really describe God, but he is a God of wisdom. That's beyond intelligence. And so, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to get to my main scripture before I go into any discussion on artificial intelligence because it can. Thank you. It, hello? Yeah. Good. It can become quite academic, but we need to understand it before, you know. So I want you all to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and be reading from verse 6 to 16 and be going to visit this scripture twice. I'm going to show you all what God showed me, um, and just for us to follow and understand without becoming too cluttered in our thoughts in what I'm going to say. Hallelujah. All right. So yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although, and let me just give a background, this is Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, but we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they did, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him. And I just want to stick a pin right there. There are some persons who will have questions that arise. And I had this question personally. And just in case you have this question and you want an answer, let me just say that passage of scripture. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him. The devil does not know your thoughts. He implants thoughts. And make you feel it's yours. But the devil does not know your thoughts. You can have conversations with God in your mind. He ain't hearing nothing. And that scripture proves it. So we continue. 
So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And it's amazing because God's Spirit, when we think about it, it's our Spirit living in this dirt body. And then we have God's Spirit living in us. That's great. We are in a good place as children of God. So we continue. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God that we might understand the things freely given us by God. It tells you we cannot understand the things of God without the Spirit of God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. So we have to get spiritual and not always be feeding on milk. That's actually still being children of the flesh. But we want to move on to become children of God as in spiritual. Because spiritually things are designed spiritually as we will continue to see. Right? The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God. For they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So the spiritual person judges. And that Greek word there... Anar, anak rikne. Let me repeat that. Anak rikne. It means to examine, to question, inquire. So it's not judge in the English sense of uh, judging you, but it's a. Uh, it's like when you're in a court and you have pre-submissions before the actual trial. This is what that is. It's an examination. So the spiritual person examines, inquires on all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? And I just want, as I said, I'm going to visit the scripture again, but I'm going to talk about the word instruct and that Greek word there. Sum bi passe. So sum bis basse, it's, it's, that's the word for instruct. It's a, it's a verb, it's future and active. So it means just that in the English sense. So let me read it over again. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? Therefore, if you have only the mind of Christ, but we have the mind of Christ, but you have only the mind of Christ, therefore the devil cannot instruct you. Therefore, things of this world cannot instruct you exactly how you're thinking the word instruct is in the English sense is exactly how the Greek word means it to be. All right. So, you're probably wondering how does this relate to artificial intelligence and divine intelligence? But we will go and continue and see. But everything about artificial intelligence has to do with the mind. All right. All right. The way how the mind works, it's still, we can't really understand it because we did not create the mind. So only the manufacturer of the mind can understand how the mind works. And so the mind itself is complicated. And so even how thoughts come, to us, it comes like a radio transmission. It enters in right here, prefrontal cortex. And so it develops images, and then it's either we accept it or we reject it. Because good thoughts, we should accept. <laughs> bad thoughts, anything bad, we should reject. Because remember, the enemy, enemy's intention is to corrupt. And in order to corrupt a clean heart, it has to come through the mind first, and it enters in and goes down, right? So scientifically, electrical signals propagate like a wave to thousands of neurons, and I want you all to remember that word, neurons, which lead to thought formation. So neurons, basically, they are nerve cells that send messages all over your body to allow you to do everything from breathing to talking, eating, walking, and thinking. You see how important it is to understand that neurons neurons are like they, they they describe thoughts as neurons that fire and i will get into that but you see that the neurons linked to inside the neurons has nerve cells that control how we breathe how we talk how we eat how we walk how we think every single thing so it's extremely important that 
we put our thoughts into captivity to obey Christ. Right? So, the mind is intelligent. The, the, the creation of the mind is intelligent. And so I would have mentioned before, in order to, for this mind to understand this mind, you have to, under, you have to get to the source, the manufacturer who created it. And so therefore, we have now artificial intelligence to reach its full potential. They have to understand the mind because the intention is that they want, and there are good things of artificial intelligence, which we will just touch on briefly, but the negative thing is that they want these robots to operate without you telling them exactly what to do. They want it to respond to you. But in order for that to take place, they have to operate with a mind of its own. And so the intention is a robot with a mind, basically a robot with a soul, right? So let's put it in the rank of things. And before I put this in the rank of things, this is what I, I learned recently. I want to tell you all this. It's something called the string theory. And it's not complicated. It's very, very simple, actually. So before I put even the rank of things to understand the creation of the mind, and I'm talking about the human mind, we have, we'll, we have to know that who created the human mind is much more intelligent than the human mind in itself. And so artificial intelligence is created by, or re, no, created by an imperfect being, which is man. So it's a human mind that created, or human intelligence created artificial intelligence. But who created the human intelligence would be a divine intelligence, which is God Almighty. And how that relate to string theory is this. Let me just give you all an example of the mind of God. Because if we could even, we could try so string theory is basically when they go down, they looked at an orange, for example, and they went down straight into it and it goes into just like what I mentioned, neurons. And inside those neurons, or even before the neurons, um, there's electrons, protons, and all of that. So those are all the scientific ways. I'm not going too scientific. But when they go down deep, deep, deep within, the last thing that they found is that it's a string of vibrations. So, basically, side string theory, which is still being developed, proves. And before, God help me to describe this rather. String, string theory, we are all made up of cells, right? And so, too, are our fruits, the trees, and everything. But when science goes deep into it, you see little fine particles. Those particles are now being seen as strings. This is a recent development because before they only stopped up to a certain level of particle. But as it goes down, the strings then turns into vibrations. So when you think of, say, a violin and you click the violin, a sound is vibrated. And so just like our sound is vibrating, it travels and it transfers and we receive it. Same to our thoughts and the same way. So what happened is that when they look at these particles, just like human beings and fruits and trees and all of that, it comes down to this vibration, which is a symphony. It's just a sound, which proves that we were created by the voice of God. And so that tells you the mind of God that when he says that in the book of Hebrews, that in his arm, um, we, uh, we, everything holds together by the power of his word. So when he comes, is when, that's why when we say in the name of Jesus, demons must flee. We speak in that into the atmosphere straight to, they must obey because God created all things by saying, let it be. So we have to understand that God in his wisdom, and we could never fully, we could try, we could try and scratch the surface a little bit of the intelligence of God. And I would say the wisdom, right? So as I said, in the rank of things, we have divine, perfect intelligence, which I would say the divine, perfect wisdom. Then we have human wisdom or human intelligence. I'll put it, sorry. 
and then we have artificial intelligence. All right, so let's get a little bit about understanding AI. Right, so you'll have a bit of understanding of where this originated from. So when I was looking into artificial intelligence, I saw that it first began with Aristotle. And I don't know how many of you all ever heard of Aristotle, it's Greek methodology and all of that. And so he did not believe in God. So that tells you the spirit behind artificial intelligence and the intentions of the enemy because the enemy is a trickster. He's been around quite a long time. And so I'm sure he would want and desire to understand how God created man because he can't do it, right? So think about that. The enemy cannot create, only God can. And so, in order to recreate something, you have to understand or imitate something to understand how it was done. So, using man to then understand how to form the mind, right? So, artificial intelligence is like building smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. Artificial intelligence allows machines to model or even improve upon the capabilities of the human mind. And so there are benefits. We see that half of the banks in the world are using artificial intelligence already, all right, to, to basically to deal with risk management and even to generate own, their own revenue. We see that even in medicine, they're trying to use it to diagnose patients more accurately. We see it in media and all of that. But artificial, artificial intelligence is broken down into two areas, which is a strong and a weak area. And we use the weak version of artificial intelligence. So the strong version would be exactly what they wanted to do, which is to solve problems and think for its own self. And right now, we use the weak ones, which would be like Siri, Alexa, Waze, Google Maps, all those things. Those are weak intel um, artificial intelligence. But the intention is artificial intelligence also consists of machine... Oh, look. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> right, so artificial intelligence consists of machine learning and deep learning. So machine learning, they use stats and they predict based on statistics. And deep learning, they use biological and they're biologically inspired. But the main thing I want you all to focus on in terms of or take away from artificial intelligence is that there are four main areas for it to reach its full, full, full potential. And the last two areas are the ones that they haven't been able to conquer. So we see the benefits of artificial intelligence, but the end goal isn't just that. That's just the introduction, right? So we have reactive machines. Those are ones that are capable of perceiving things and react to what is in front of them. They hold no memory. We have limited memory AI. Basically, they store very simple data and they predict. But then we have this thing called theory of mind. They have, they have not been able to conquer this yet. This would mean that AI could comprehend you humans, animals, and other machines and feel and make decisions through self-reflection, determination, and then utilize the information to make their own decisions. And so we also have, in order for them to reach number four, which is self-awareness, they have to conquer theory of mind. Basically, they have to understand how the mind works. And so even when God spoke to me about the intentions of artificial intelligence is to understand the mind, and I wrote it down, and when I was doing my research after, I saw that a, sci a scientist actually said this, that the, the, the main enigma is that they don't understand the human mind. So it actually confirmed when God spoke to me and I wrote it and then I went to the research, it confirmed to me exactly what God was saying. That they don't understand human mind, but in order to, they, to reach their full potential of artificial intelligence and the impact that they want to have on the world. And I'm saying they, but we understand the spirit behind it, right? So once theory of mind can be established, the final step would be self-awareness and this is the kind of that possesses human level consciousness and understand its own existence in the world 
So, bear with me, guys. What is intelligence? I looked at two definitions, which is the Kimish definition of what intelligence is, and this is where I saw in reading, and thank you, Lord, for this, that God is not just intelligence, and we can't describe him as that. So when we look at the definition of intelligence, I looked at two definitions from Cambridge and Oxford, two respectable type of dictionaries, right? And so Cambridge would have said is the ability to learn, understand, and make judgments or have opinions that are based on reason. And then we have Oxford saying that is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Is that our God? Exactly. Our God is all knowing. He is the custodian of intelligence. And we can see that in his word, when he says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20, when he said that, you know, when this is John speaking to the congregation of Asia Minor, and he said, for whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. And so we even see it with Christ in Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. When Apostle Paul was speaking to the church of Colossae, he said this, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea, for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding into the knowledge of God's mystery. So you might say and, like I did say on Friday, that that word and is really supposed to be into when you look at the Greek word there. The Greek word for and is kai. Kai isn't there. And so it's another word that is there that describes into the knowledge of God. Into the, So God is saying that we will get full assurance. He's given us full assurance of understanding into the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. And this is the part in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. So the real comparison really is artificial intelligence versus divine wisdom. The fake versus the real and the false versus the truth. And we know that we have the spirit of truth living in us. Hallelujah. And so when we look at the definition of artificial it is made or produced by human beings rather than occurring naturally, especially as a copy of something natural. So artificial is a copy of what is natural, which was created by God. Right. So the artificial intelligence is an imitation. And so I thank you, Lord, that even when he said God said in his word, that we read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 to 16, that not even artificial intelligence or natural intelligence can comprehend the things of God. We need the spirit of God. We need the spirit of truth. So only understanding the things of God can be done through the spirit of God. But then again, I looked at this. Huh? Who could really comprehend God? Who could comprehend his love for us? Who could comprehend that even when we are in a tough time and situation, that we still have this unexplainable peace? And if it is a feeling not at peace, rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God said in his word, as peace I leave, peace I give to you, peace I leave. I don't give like the world do. He did not give it like the world do. The world is corrupted. His peace is perfect. He is peace and he gives peace. He is love and he gives love. And that's what I love about the double nature of God. Everything that is perfect. He is perfect and he just perfecting us. Every day with his words. Sanctifying us. Cleaning us and making us holy. Holy in him. Because he said be holy as I am. And so we can't be holy in our own way. We can't be... Our righteousness is like filthy rags. And I remember when a time, I probably said this before, but I have real testimonies. And I remembered there was a time in my life when I was so far away from God, thought I was so close to him. And I stayed him all day that day. And in the end of the day, I said, hmm, I did not sin today. That 
is crazy madness. That's tell you how far I was from God. And so our righteous, like filthy rags, most of the times, when, even when you look at the children of Israel, and Israel had all these evil kings. They did what was evil in the eyes of God. They thought that they were doing right, you know, but they were doing evil. And so we don't want to end up in a situation where we are doing evil towards God in order to achieve this salvation till the end, this endurance. We need to allow God to continue to sanctify us and make us whole and see righteousness through his eyes. He is perfect. We are not. Right. And this is, it gets me to this when God showed me this analogy. And this is where you just can't understand God. But he's so, but you just have to be grateful, boy. When God said in Isaiah 66 verse 1, he says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? So basically, heaven and earth is a chair to God. Think about this. We are here in earth. But this earth is his footstool. Heaven is massive. It has three layers. And the third heaven is where God sits. That's where his throne is. That's where his seat is. It's like a chair. And just like how ants are to us, that's how we are to God. And so when you look at the fact that we, how many of us actually will turn into or come as an ant, come in the ant, will die for the ants so that they would live with you. Like how many of us would really, really actually do that? None of us will do that. I will not do that. And that's how I know Jesus is Lord. I say, Lord, you're good to know because human beings are real hard to deal with and for you to come here and still live this sin-free life they real do you and you, you still said father forgive them for you know not what you do in the mighty name of jesus i rebuke you by fire and by power of the holy spirit i rebuke you in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah so god is a good god and he continues to be good and he continues to be great. His love, as I said, is just unexplainable. Unexplainable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God then continues to give us the ability to understand his scripture. Because we see that in his word, that that is where he sanctifies us and cleans us and makes us whole and so in order for that to be done he opens our minds Luke 24 45 says this then he opened the minds their minds which is the minds of the disciples at the time when he was resurrected to understand scriptures and so he continues continues to do that today so how could we so let's get to the mind and, you, and artificial intelligence and even how it impacts now our world how could we really receive eternal life if we are not in our right mind to comprehend him who is eternal life and so we see that eternal life is knowing God knowing the true the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent that is John 17 3 when I first read that I was blown away that eternal life is not an actual location but eternal life is knowing God and that knowing is not knowing him like I know him like you think like you know you know the neighbor next door probably driving a blue car not like that you're intimately knowing him gonosco that's the Greek word there that type of know where you know something just like I know this person walking on the side of the road, that word, Greek word there is oidamen. It's just as that. So the word that God desires when he talks about knowing gnosko, he's speaking about intimately knowing him. And so that is what eternal life is. So God created the mind for him so that we are able to comprehend who he is. And so the enemy wants to replicate this in robots and so the intention of the en enemy and why he want the question is why does he want to do this and we will get it because it's it's like 
Why? <laughs> God is good. So, we turn it back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 16. I'm not going to read the whole thing again, but basically in summary, it really says to, in order to understand spiritual things, it must, it must be discerned spiritually and that the natural mind cannot comprehend them. So we're going str straight down to verse 15, but it's really 16 I want to tell you all about. So the spiritual person judges, which I, when we already spoke about that, that means examine all things, but it's himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? We know that we as believers who have the mind of Christ cannot be instructed by this world, but we have the mind of Christ. And that word mind, when you look at the Greek lexicon, noon, it talks about the intellectual faculty of the natural man so it just proves that god when he asks us to put on his mind nobody can instruct god nobody can tell him what to do and so even when we put on the mind of christ because our mind is bombarded every day by thoughts of the enemy and so we need to know that we have to continue to put on the mind of christ daily but as i asked why does the enemy want to recreate the mind? The enemy wants to control the intellectual faculty of the natural man, which was designed for God. And he wants to turn our dependency from God to man, to artificial intelligence. How many of us are quick to turn to if something happens to us, if we feel a headache, instead of rebuking it and declaring the word of God in our lives that we are by, our, by his stripes, we are healed, we go straight to Google, Dr. Google, and get the worst ever, the <laughs> worst ever symptom reducer or whatever you can find. And I can tell you this, sir. Huh? I'll give you all an example of me messing up with weak AI and choosing weak AI over the divine wisdom of God. I was driving from Toko to back to home, right? And while I was driving, I did not know the road at all. I was using ways to go and to come. And when I was on my way, and I think I would have said this before, but God brought this back to me. When I was on my way, I passed the stretch I was supposed to take. So, while I'm passing the stretch, I did not recognize it, but then I felt this tug that I did pass it. The same time, God is telling me, he spoke first. He said, stop, turn around, and go back. Waze is now recalculating me. So Waze is recalculating me to continue to go straight. I heard the voice three times. Stop, turn around, go back. I say, Lord, what? Ways calculate me this way. So I'm going this way. So I chose weak AI over God. And what ended up happening to me is that I ended up in a really bad accident. And it could have taken my life. Because in that split second, I just closed my I just shout Jesus and closed my eyes because a man came out onto the main road and I was driving a little hard, gunning it down, going. <laughs> And so he come out, he didn't even look at the mirror that was opposite. And I crashed into this man and I felt like I was going to ball up in a ball. And when I came out of the car, I had nothing, no scratch, nothing. So God is a God of second chances. Even when I was disobedient, God still, he still saved me. But I can tell you this, I learned my lesson. I'm not depending on no weak AI over the divine wisdom of God. He sees all things and he's all knowing. And God wants us to continue to be dependent on him, not on human or artificial imperfect intelligence because he is not just intelligent, he is wisdom. He gives it, he's the custodian of intelligence. And everything that comes out of this world is corrupted and this world is going to pass away. And somebody had asked, how will this world pass away? 
and I saw it in Revelations. <sighs> when the presence of God descends in the book of Revelation, the sky and the earth will pass away. He is holy. The corrupt world cannot be in his place. They, it cannot stand it. That's why demons must tremble and must go in the mighty name of Jesus when we declare his name. Because he is holy and righteous. That is why in the, in the Old Testament when King David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back with God's presence. And those, uh, Ryok, Uziah, one of them, two of them actually, they touched God's presence and they were unholy. They were not supposed to do that and they died instantly. That is why we live and we have to thank God for his mercy daily because we have to thank God for his mercy and his patience. Some people want God to come right now but God wants to save as much as he can. His desire is to save everybody. But if he descends now, how many of us will not be able to stand in his presence? So many of us think we are saved. But oh gosh, this salvation is a work in progress. Yes, you get saved immediately, but to maintain that saving grace, trust me, it is work. God said, don't work for your salvation, but you work it out. It's a daily process. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what do we do with these thoughts that enter our minds? The prefrontal cortex that the enemy is trying to send. And I want to say this, the neuroscientists describe the neurons that fire. The neuroscientists say that thoughts are generated when neurons, as the same nerves as control everything, fire. And how does the enemy come? Like a fiery dart. And that, was, that had me thinking, and I thank God for that revelation. And what God told us to do, we have to put on his armor. Not our armor. It's his armor, the whole armor, the whole armor, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the shield of, the, the shield of faith, which we must rise to deal with the fiery darts, the breastplate of righteousness, preparation of gospel and peace on our feet, the sword, the word of God. We have to keep on keeping on. The whole armor is not armors, it's one armor one armor and so it includes every single aspect of it because the enemy he looking around seeing who he could devour he already have those in the world so we in church need to always be on our guard and we always have to be our brothers and sisters keeper amen <laughs> hallelujah so the word of god hebrews 4 11 says that it discerns the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so, you know, God, when God said, and I was so shocked, I was like, I didn't understand it at first, but then he said it in another scripture that he searches our hearts and tests our minds. That's serious thing, you know. So if God tests your mind right now, what would he find in it? If he's searching your heart right now, what would he find in it? <sighs> oh, Lord. Recently, I was battling with tons of things and thoughts that came my way. And it was a real struggle until God gave me a new heart. That was recently. That was, let me tell you, that's not even two weeks now. God gave me a new heart. I really pray for it. Because it was such a struggle dealing with brothers and sisters in Christ who offend. And the reaction towards the offense. And trying to understand that it's not about me. It is about him. Because we, this is dirt buddy and all you. And we don't, we don't deserve nothing. The gospel message is simple, you know. Jesus Christ came and died for us. We didn't choose him first. He chose us. He chose us, and so therefore we deserve nothing. When I looked at back at when I look back at my life, I don't want to go back to who I was. That song said it and spoke it. I do not want to go back to who I was. I don't even want to lie with that. In fact, if I see anything similar, I don't want to be in the same space with me. But now I'm grateful for what God is doing. 
So it's every day. You see, pride, oh, that's one thing I say, Lord, I don't want that to come back at all, at all, at all. And more if God bless me with early riches is not for me. It is to bless others. And so we have to think about that. Think about that. Because all of this is vanity. King Solomon said it. All of it is vanity. So we have to keep on keeping on. Because King Solomon in his old age, he was loving up on God, you know. But then he was disobedient. Marry some woman he wasn't supposed to marry. And then after, what happened? He ended up serving idols. Well, his heart wasn't holy for God. And holy as in not, I'm not speaking about holy and righteous. I'm talking about completely surrendered for God. And so it's, that's why we have to always be in our God and be our brother and sister's keeper. All right. So, how does divine wisdom relate to artificial intelligence? The goal that the enemy wants to control our minds, the first thing we want to do is that we want to depend on weak AI over God. But what we have to do is to continue to tap into the source of life, right? Continue to tap into the source of life, artificial intelligence. And I said it on Friday, artificial intelligence is detrimental to someone whose mind is already debased, alienated, and hostile to God. Because that is what our minds are like before coming into the knowledge of Christ. Alienated and hostile to the things of God. And then what God did, and I love the scripture in Colossians 1.20. 122 and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death and so we have life today because he rose again hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah all right so god wants us to continue to seek him to continue to seek him with all our hearts. And he said in his word, it's a promise to know. If you seek me with all your hearts and mind, you will find me. So it's, it's like, that's a promise. That God is there to be discovered if we seek him with all our hearts. And that is what King David actually told King Solomon when he was handing over the battle. He told him that. And we know now that God gave us his spirit in order to discern him. But what we have to do daily is what God showed me in the beginning, is what, which is what I touched on, which is to continue to renew your mind. We are transformed by the renewal of our minds. And, in all, and so... In order to be transformed with the renewal, by the renewal of your mind, you have to continue to remain in the word of God. For God's word renews our mind daily. We have to continue to put our mind under subjection because it could go any kind of way. We want, to, we want that track where our mind tends to go to be fully grown with grass and not go back into that track and we need to follow the track of christ in the mighty name of jesus and allow him to continue to clean our minds daily it's a work in progress and if you fail because i failed last week you know i failed last week when it came to the battle of my mind but god is a redeemer and a god of second chances and he don't ever, what I love about God, that second chance thing, is a serious thing, you know, that was revealed to me last year. And I was, I asked God, what do you mean by your God of second chances? He does not remind us of what we've done before. He gives us a clean new slate. And so when we, if it is that we fall again, he's not going to remind us of the past. It's a new day. Yes, we fall, but then he gives us a second chance. So it's always a second chance chance it's never third or fourth or fifth chance don't ever bring down yourself in a place where you're you are you fall again but maybe it's your fifth time you remember it but god didn't remember it god purposely forgot it because he forgave us 
because we came with a repentant heart. So don't bog down yourself saying things about yourself. There was a time I looked in the mirror and I didn't think I was beautiful. And I had decided I was going to put products on my face to make my skin look fair. Because in that moment, I was in bondage, desiring a relationship. And the person I was looking at was looking at people who were much fairer than me. And I felt like I needed to become that. I was in a bad way. But God, he's so good. And I had to look at myself just the other day and say, hmm, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And that is what, <laughs> hallelujah. And that's what we have to do. You see, when we know the word of God, when the enemy comes through here with those disgusting fiery darts, we can say and shoot up with the word of God and slice it. We slice it. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. We slice it. I am free in the mighty name of Jesus. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. We slice it by his stripes. We were healed. We slice every single word of the enemy, every fiery dart, every lie we ought not to believe. Because why? We have on the mind of Christ. And who can instruct him? So who can instruct us except the spirit of the living God? <laughs> Hallelujah. So continue to remain in God's word. Continue to know that you are not the only one going through battles. We all go through it. I understand what it's like to be living poured out. Last week, to preach this word. I didn't even know God was going to bring this. I sat down Friday. And I was wondering if I was even still preaching Friday. Because I didn't have a sermon. It is God who did this. I didn't do this. All this happened in less than a day. And... Uh, everything all the information everything the only thing though is that god did give me the scripture the week before but the whole week after that was battle 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 i'm looking at the scripture and i couldn't understand how it was related to i didn't i couldn't see it not realizing that god was going to use my whole battle for the week to tie in his word that's living poured out and i rather any day i rather live poured out i rather go through the pressure i rather go through exactly what they say in hebrews i rather go through it that live outside and are dead. So, be encouraged today. I thank God. His grace is sufficient daily and his mercies are renewed every morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>